Camp Meeting 2023, Mark and Trina invite you to celebrate 50 years of ministry. Save the date June 27 through 29 in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers, including Reverend Patsy Caminetti, Reverend Ted Shuttlesworth Jr., music with Ray Jean Wilson, and much more. This is a life-changing experience for the whole family. Please join us June 27th through 29th. Register today at markhankins.org. In other words, Paul saying the shipwrecks didn't stop me, the devil couldn't stop me, the whole Roman Empire couldn't stop me. I'm standing right here because I'm a man in Christ. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if you have your Bible, let's look at that real quickly here, and I know that most of you know this verse. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, that old things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Praise the Lord. If any person, in other words, this works for anybody, not some select group of people, but any person, any man, any woman, anybody, anywhere, the moment you are in Christ, the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, he says, now you are in Christ. One writer said what happened is you just got in Christed. You got in Christed. And you become a new creature. The word new literally means new in kind or means new in quality or it literally means unheard of before. So you're not just a different person, you're a new kind of person that never existed before. What kind of a creature are you anyway? Well, I like to say it this way, you can no longer say that I'm only human. You have to say I'm also human, but I am not only human. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of me. The spirit of God lives on the inside of you. The same life that God gave to Christ, that he gives that same life to every believer and to every new creature in Christ. Amen? And um, studying this kind of life that's in you in Christ, I like to read several things so we can kind of keep our theology straight. Amen? keep our Bible doctrine straight. And so I wrote this from, a, I, I got this from one writer and he said it this way. I think it's uh, James Stewart and he said it this way. He said, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you receive the gift of eternal life. And here's the way he explained it. He said, this life which flows from Christ into man is something totally different from anything experienced on the natural plane. It is different not only in degree, but also in kind. It is a new kind or a new quality of life. It is a supernatural quality of life. As Paul puts it elsewhere, there is a new creation. And here's the way he said it. It is not just the intensification of powers already possessed, but it is the sudden emergence of an entirely new and original element. Whenever a man comes to be in Christ, he begins to live in the sphere of the post-resurrection life of Jesus. This life which he now lives bears the quality of eternity. McLeod Campbell in his great work on the atonement says, ordinary religion is so much a struggle to secure an unknown future happiness instead of being the meditation on and the welcoming of the present gift of eternal life. All right, let's try that one more time. Ordinary religion is so much a struggle to secure an unknown future happiness instead of the meditation on and the welcoming of the present gift of eternal life. 
He said, this is the Apostle Paul's glory and joy. It is life with the stamp of eternity on it, and it is the present possession of every believer. In other words, it's not something you get when you die. It's what you receive when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. He that hath the Son hath, what? Life. Now, when you travel around the world, we go to many different countries, many different religions. So many religions have so many good elements in them. So comparing different religions, I said, well, what's some of the differences in different religions? And one of the things the Lord said to me, he said, every religion offers lessons, but only Jesus Christ gives life. Every religion tries to teach and tries to help, but Jesus came to give more than just a lesson. He said, I have come that you might have life, eternal life, the God kind of life, and it's not something you get when you die. It's something you get when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. It is a present possession. And that life is what makes you a new creation because it's the same life that raised Christ from the dead. Same life that raised Christ from the dead. God gave us the very same life, overcoming life, resurrection life. It's the God kind of life. It's the life of heaven. It's the life that's in God. It's the life that's in Christ. It's that life that made Jesus a master over all of the enemies. And you have that same life. And it is that life in you. That life will develop your spirit. It will illuminate your mind. It will increase your intellect. It will enhance your personality. It will resist sickness and disease in your body. That life on the inside of you will enlighten your mind. It will make you smarter. Come on, y'all just walk around singing, I got the life of God on the inside of me. The same life that's in God, same life that's in Christ is on the inside of me. Amen? So he said, it's this life that makes you a new creation. And if any person's in Christ, they become a new creature, a new kind of creature that never existed before. You look like a regular person on the outside, but on the inside, your spirit has this life. This life is in you right now. And to live in the consciousness of it, you need to acknowledge that, know about it, meditate on it, and declare it. I have the life of God in me. I have resurrection life. Same life as in Christ is in me right now. It makes me more than a conqueror in every situation. It's God's life inside of me. Amen? So it's what makes you a new creature or a new creation. If anyone's in Christ, they become a new, new kind of creature that never existed before. And Hollywood and, and always has fantasies about a Superman and a Wonder Woman. But if there ever was a Superman and a Wonder Woman, it would be a person who is in Christ. Because the moment you get in Christ, you've got powers. You have no idea what you have on the inside of you. Amen. So some of these, I, I love some of these quotes um, come from P.C. Nelson, who wrote Bible doctrines for the Assemblies of God, same Bible school that me and, and uh, Pastor Hagen went to. And uh, P.C. Nelson said this. He said, no great preacher has arisen to bless the people of God who has not lighted his torch at the flame kindled by Paul. No great preacher. Now we're talking about preachers because this room is full of preachers that preach the gospel all over the world. In other words, he said, no great preacher has arisen to bless a generation who has not received the same fire and lighted his torch at the flame kindled by Paul. In other words, Paul's revelation is not just Paul's revelation. It becomes your revelation. God didn't give it to Paul for Paul. He gave it to Paul for you. In other words, you can see the same thing that Paul saw. Have the same revelation. What will it do? Produce the same effect. It'll make you a nation changer with a divine destiny that no devil can stop you. Come on, no situation can stop you. One of my favorite passages of Scripture in the New Testament is in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 26. In Acts 26, the apostle Paul is standing before King Agrippa and Festus governors and Bernice and the leaders of the whole Roman Empire. When I get to heaven, I'm going to check out the video of Acts 26. 
And the apostle Paul is standing before the leaders of the whole Roman Empire. And his hands are bound, his feet are bound, and he's been beaten with 39 stripes five times, been beaten with rods three times. He's been beaten and left for dead, been in four shipwrecks, and Paul stands in front of the leaders of the Roman Empire, and he said, I think myself happy. <laughs> now, if you saw it on video, you'd see that this, this little guy here is the only happy person there. It said the other leaders of the Roman Empire had come with great pomp actually to make fun of the Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul's testimony is in the book of Acts three times. Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 22, and right here in Acts chapter 26. And Paul begins to tell his testimony. He said, I think myself happy. Other translators say, I'm a happy man. One translation says, I've been congratulating myself. <laughs> He's certainly not the one there who has the most money. Come on. He's not the one who lives the most comfortable life, but he's the happiest man there. How and why is he so happy? Well, because Paul describes himself in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, is a man in Christ. He said, I knew a man in Christ, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Such a man ascended to the third heaven. In other words, this man in Christ literally has access to the realm of God. Cannot be controlled by the devil or circumstances. Paul here says, I'm a happy man. I thought, why is he so happy? I, I, here's what I figured out why he's so happy. Because he's standing in the place that Jesus told him 30 years before that you will stand before the rulers of the whole world and testify that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he's alive. In other words, Paul's saying the shipwrecks didn't stop me. The devil couldn't stop me. The whole Roman Empire couldn't stop me. I'm standing right here because I'm a man in Christ. That means you have a divine destiny. Come on. And no devil can stop it. But your destiny is connected to your identity. Notice the Apostle Paul's identity confession in Galatians 2.20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Let's try that again. Sometimes we read it too fast, you know. I am. <laughs> in other words, Paul said, I was there when Jesus was crucified. I was crucified with him. But if you actually study the scene, really you had Jesus on the cross and a thief on either side, and there's no record Paul was even in Jerusalem. So how could Paul say he was crucified with Christ? Paul explains what happened on the cross is that one man, through one man's disobedience, all were made sinners and all died, and through one man's obedience, we all were declared righteous and received eternal life. In other words, Paul says, one man got us in this mess and one man got us out of this mess. You ought to laugh about that. Come on. I said, one man, Adam, got us in this mess and one man, Jesus Christ, got us out of this mess. I love what Lovett's translation says of Romans 5.20, one of my grandpa's favorite scriptures. That it says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Love his translation says, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. All right, let's try this out over here. Come on, because you have been damaged. But God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. In other words, don't keep magnifying the damage. Look to the cross and look to the blood of Jesus and look to what Christ has done. Hallelujah. I love in Paul's revelation, his identification with Christ when he said, I was crucified with Christ. They said, yeah, but crucified people die. He said, well, I did, but I'm still alive, but it's not really me. 
Well, who is it? He said, it's Christ that lives in me. In other words, you cannot go through a crucifixion without a radical change. I was crucified with Christ. I love um, studying identification with Christ because Paul said we were there in his cross. And then Paul says we were there made alive with him. We were there raised up with him. We were there seated together with him. In other words, your identification with Christ is the center of the gospel. And you must have an identity change to reach your destiny. And God is the master at changing identity. Literally make you a new creature, a new creation, and old things pass away and everything becomes new. Let's try that again. I said old things pass away and everything becomes new. In other words, this literally changes everything. I love some other translations and the other translations say this. I consider myself as having died and now I'm enjoying a new existence which is simply Jesus using my body. Come on. One of my other favorite translations, the Message Bible says, I identified myself completely with Christ. In other words, you can get your identity And they say there's three in psychology, they say there's three what they call determinisms that determine your life, the direction, the quality of your life. One, they call it genetic determinism. That means I am what I am, I got what I got because of what my mom and daddy made me. Genetic determinism. The second one they call that um, psychic or psychological determinism. That means I am what I am because of the way that I think, I got what I have because the way I think, come on, are because of what happened to me. Come on, and things happen to people that they'll still be living with that on them for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But once you find out what happened to Jesus is greater than anything that has ever happened to you. Come on, his blood is greater. His mercy is greater. His love is greater. Come on, his grace is greater. I identified myself completely with him. So there's genetic determinism and some people still blaming their mama and their daddy. Psychological, well, if you knew what happened to me, you'd know why I'm the way that I am. Environmental determinism, come on. If you knew the neighborhood and the, where I grew up, then that has shaped me and made me what I am. But the moment you are in Christ, The moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, I call that in Christ determinism. You're no longer what your mama made you. You're no longer what your daddy made you. You're no longer what the past made you. You're no longer what environment made you. You are now what God made you. Come on, and God made you a new creature in Christ. Listen, God has a reputation for working with some real losers and making them champions. Don't look at anybody right now. I said, God, I think God likes choosing. Come on, people that are nothing, can't do nothing. Come on, made every kind of mistake. And God said, I can make you a new creature. I'll put a new heart in you. I'll put a new life in you. I'll put a new righteousness in you. Come on, you're not locked up in something that happened in your past. The devil can't hold you there. The blood of Jesus has set you free, and that blood has opened heaven, and that blood reaches into your heart. Redeeming power of the blood of Jesus in Christ. Actually, the two words in Christ literally are blood covenant terminology. Hallelujah. Blood covenant terminology. Through the power of the blood of Jesus, you're a new creature in Christ. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So Paul said, I'm a happy man. Something happened on the road to Damascus that this Jesus that died on the cross is not dead. He is alive. 
Paul said, I met him and turned his whole life around. He said, now I have a whole new identity. I'm now who God says I am. I'm a new creature in Christ. There's actually 130 in Christ scriptures. Now, when I was 17 years old, my dad, four deacons, came and got me out of jail. And preacher's kids have trouble because they hang out with deacon's kids. So, Dad Hagen had come to my church. Even Pastor Hagen had come before. And so, Dad Hagen, I'm just 17 years old, and Dad Hagen wasn't real cool. He didn't have the latest hairdo. He didn't have no skinny jeans on. You know, they can cut off the circulation to your brain if you get to wear them too long. But he just came teaching the Word. And he said, there's many ways you can study the Bible or study the New Testament. And while I was raised in Sunday school, so we studied all the Bible stories. He said, there's many ways. He said, but the way I recommend the most is to go through Paul's letters. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, all of Paul's letters. I like what P.C. Nelson and James Stalker said about Paul's letters. He said, Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. They are the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of the death, burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. What happened from the cross to the throne in those three days changed everything. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. God is planting a whole new crop of righteousness, wisdom, redemption, sanctification, blessing, joy, and victory on the inside of you. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. Mark Hankins' book, The Power of Identification with Christ, is just for you. You have a supernatural identity. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. With the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God will show you who you are in Christ. When you order this book as a bonus, we will send you the four CD set in Christ this changes everything. When we see what God has done for us in Christ, the reality of redemption will swallow up all our former identities. Everything Jesus did, he did it for you. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your Love C will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. When you sow into someone's needs, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, The Power of Identification with Christ and the four CD set in Christ, This Changes Everything. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were so blessed and you received so much revelation from the message that my dad shared. I know I'm always so blessed by everything that he preaches and teaches us comes from a well of revelation. And I'm so glad to get to be a part of listening to that. My parents wanna make sure that you also get that opportunity, not only just tuning in, but also getting this by way of book into your home. We want to get this book to you for your gift of any amount. And what's so awesome about your gift of any amount is that it's going to go toward 
the, the finishing of Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. It's exciting at what God is doing with Mark Hankins Ministry, getting this conference center up and going. We're super excited about it, and we wanna make sure that you get to be a part of that. So for your gift of any amount, you can call the number on the screen, or you can go to markhankins.org, and we will get this message to you. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do his part and make sure the word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can, Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, BTN, and the Word Network and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.